Welcome to our group presentation, Applying Walton's Categories of Art to Abstract Expressionism, by Michelle France, Summer Keever, Jason Lancaster, and Misty Stratton. It is our goal to apply the Waltonian approach to perceptively categorizing art by examining the standard, variable, and contrastandard features in regard to specific abstract expressionist paintings. According to Walton, the standard features in any given category of art are the qualities that unite a piece of work with its like companions. These are the characteristics that are somehow expected or taken for granted as they can contribute to a work a sense of order, inevitability, stability, and correctness. These elements can range from the subject matter represented within a particular category, as in landscape painting, to the style of representation such as cubism, to the size of the work itself, murals for instance. When applied to a particular category or work of art, standard features can aid in the unification of similar pieces of work and in some cases necessitate the forming of new categories when certain features become recurrent enough to be considered standard. In abstract expressionism, there are several attributes which stand out as being standard. First and foremost is the immediacy of expression on behalf of the artist. Abstract expressionist artists drew a great deal of inspiration from surrealism and the idea of automatism, the practice of allowing the subconscious to express itself in an unrestricted manner. This concept is one of the predominant uniting factors within abstract expressionism one of the few which can be applied to both action painting and color field painting. Abstract expressionism is unique in that it is divided into two distinct practices. Action painting, comprised of highly energized canvases, showcasing the movement in the artist's application of paint, and color field painting, canvases dominated by vast fields of color, typically large in scale so as to envelop the viewer. However, despite this duality, for abstract expressionists, the authenticity or value of a work lay in its directness and immediacy of expression. For abstract expressionist painter Jackson Pollock, immediacy of expression was achieved through unpremeditated painting, which placed emphasis on the revelation of the artist's authentic identity through spontaneous creation and a decisive lack of preparation. This is evidenced in his Autumn Rhythm Number 30, which consists of an unprimed canvas covered in a chaotic web of black, white, and brown dripped paint. Pollock was known for his method, which reveled in seemingly random dripping of thinned paint on a canvas which was laid on the ground. This technique allowed Pollock to move freely around his canvas, uninhibited and able to create impulsively. Fully abstract and steeped in energy, Autumn Rhythm celebrates its spontaneity and the expressive act of applying paint to a canvas. As such, it is exemplary of what immediacy of expression meant to the abstract expressionists. In 1952, art critic Harold Rosenberg coined the term action painting and asserted at a certain moment the canvas began to appear to one American painter after another as an arena in which to act. What was to go on the canvas was not a picture but an event. This statement posits an additional standard feature throughout abstract expressionism, especially within action painting. Abex artists were concerned with the materiality of painting, with the act itself, the application of paint on canvas, and its ability to evoke emotion. Aesthetically, this can be seen in the visible brush strokes and blatant impasto of Willem de Kooning's Untitled, 1958. The artist's presence is unapologetically evident in the highly gestural, energized lines and overlapping colors, a testament to his act of creation through his conspicuous application of paint. By leaving his process visible, de Kooning has left his essence tangible, and as such, the viewer is able to feel his presence and the emotions transcribed therein. Finally, and perhaps the most recognizable standard feature of abstract expressionism is a lack of objectively represented subject matter. Even when depicting images based on visual realities, the abstract expressionists favored a highly abstracted mode. 
While at times it is possible to draw some figurative references, especially when descriptive titles are applied, the subject matter remains fundamentally abstract. In Franz Klein's Black Reflections, the artist has covered the canvas in broad gestural brushstrokes of color with an angular black mass dominating the center of the composition. While it is known that Klein favored urban landscapes and architectural references can occasionally be drawn in his work, his depiction of his subject matter remains non-representational and thoroughly abstract expressionist. According to Walton, variable features are those perceivable features in a work that have no bearing on whether a piece is perceived as belonging to that category. For example, things like shape and color do not typically point to one category or another. As Walton states, the possession or lack of the feature is irrelevant as to whether the work qualifies for the category. In looking at Jackson Pollock's Autumn Rhythm, we can examine the variable features of color, shape, and texture. The color scheme is muted and neutral, while there are no recognizable shapes beyond the rectangular canvas. While Pollock was able to create some actual texture in this piece with the layering of paint, none of these factors have an effect on whether or not this piece belongs to the category of abstract expressionism. Franz Klein's Black Reflections is similar in its perceivable variable features. Yellows, whites, blues and browns dominate the canvas, but again these colors have no influence on the category that this work belongs to. There are no discernible shapes that are recognized by the viewer. Again, texture can also be seen as a variable feature in this work. The paint is applied evenly in most places throughout the canvas. There are small areas of actual texture created by the paint, yet this has no bearing on the fact that this piece belongs in the category Abstract Expressionism. Willem de Kooning's Untitled 1958 can easily be compared to the work of Franz Klein in its style and feel, but the variable features once again have no bearing on its category. Blacks, reds, greens, and yellows dominate the canvas. The colors in this piece are bolder and more dominating than Klein's, but the colors are not what places this work in the category of abstract expressionism. As an abstract piece, there are once again no discernible shapes and the shape of the canvas itself has no bearing on whether the piece is perceived as belonging to its specific category. There is, of course, some real texture in this piece, as with the others we've seen, that is achieved by paint layering. Small areas of impasto are present in the center of the canvas. Abstract Expressionism is such a broad style that seems driven by personal exploration, making it difficult to isolate too many features that are contrastandard, which according to Walton are features that would exclude a work from being labeled abstract expressionist. However, there are a few. If a piece of art is strictly loyal to the visual representation of a pre-existing object, then it's not abstract expressionism. Their paintings were often made of shapes, lines, and forms not meant to depict a reality from the visible world. Abstract expressionists believe that non-representational painting could express spiritual and emotional truths in the most direct way. Looking briefly at the career of Philip Guston in order to illustrate these contrastandard features will show us that Guston began his career as an abex painter, but his style evolved over the years and began to represent imagery more dedicated to capturing the likeness of pre-existing subject matter. At this point, he was no longer considered an abstract expressionist and instead labeled a social realist or neo-expressionist. Though his color palette and paint application remained very similar, the introduction of such vivid visual representation disqualifies his later works. Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko, for example, are excellent representations of the field due to the lack of pre-existing subject matter. 
It should be noted that the ABEX movement emerged following the Second World War into a Cold War social and political climate. The U.S. was characteristically very conservative and in a lot of ways paranoid in regards to external threats like communism. It was precisely this climate that created a sort of paradox within the field of abstract expressionism itself. One scholar later reflected, it is ironic but not contradictory that in a society in which political repression weighed as heavily as it did in the United States, abstract expressionism was for many the expression of freedom, the freedom to creative controversial works of art, the freedom symbolized by action painting by the unbridled expressionism of artists completely without fetters. In essence, the movement of and in itself was a sort of personal rebellion against the social and political climate. But there must be a lack of narrative and political content within a piece in order for the movement to be considered abstract expressionism. The movement was much more about personal investigation, the world within us, isolated from narrative and politics. Abstract expressionists particularly its painters, celebrated spontaneity, the exploration of the self in large paintings, bursting with free form and gestural brushwork, like Pollock's stripping paint and Clyde's slashing of form. Other artists within the movement avoided gesture and emphasized their paintings' flatness. Mark Rothko's color fields were sometimes monochromatic, stressing the two-dimensionality of the work, while others incorporated multiple hues and values as a means of exploring the luminosity of the paint itself. Color as content. The paintings are the reason for the painting, the object as an end in itself. Any piece seeking to conceal the limitations or physical nature of its materials are not abstract expressionists. Audrey Flack is a good example with her photorealistic depictions of assembled still life that convey synthetic texture and depth, denying the very nature of the surface physicality. Due to the nature of the creative process generating the work of the abstract expressionist artist, it is at heart a personal dialogue that can use nearly any language its author finds appropriate. Understanding this, it is extremely difficult to find the boundaries of the movement without then discovering at least a couple of artists existing outside these boundaries. In conclusion, abstract expressionism is perceptively distinguishable through the Waltonian lens. We have demonstrated here how each feature plays its own significant role in determining the elements of a category. It may not be as applicable in terms of all categories, but as Walton himself once said, it's that darn concept of art that has made it so hard to understand art. Thank you.